as part of our EMS Mastery Series on the Climate Change Summit COP26, which is the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change Conference taking place in November in Glasgow, this episode looks at the activities by governments to demonstrate and promote their own solutions to climate change in the run-up to COP26. This is no more evident than in each country's nationally determined contributions. So what are nationally determined contributions? How are they important to the COP26 conference? And how will they affect each of our lives, whether for myself in the United Kingdom or for you in your country? Let's take a look. Welcome to EMS Mastery, where we look at the successful strategies and tactics to master environmental management and sustainability. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Andrew Marlow. So, by now, you may already be aware that the COP26 summit will take place in Glasgow, Scotland, starting on the 1st of November and will run for two weeks until the 12th of November, after it was rescheduled from November 2020 due to the rising COVID-19 pandemic. You will hear a lot about nationally determined contributions, or NDCs, in the run-up to COP26, and so it is important to understand what they are and how they will affect the progress towards the reduction of climate change and a progress towards net zero and the impact that they will have on each of our lives. Firstly, what are nationally determined contributions? Put simply, they are a key requirement of the Paris Agreement concluded over five years ago in 2015. At that time, the first nationally determined contributions were submitted to the UNFCCC as a mechanism to avoid the intense negotiations at the COP summits by placing the actions that each country can take in response to climate change and climate action back on the country itself. The concern is that countries may be less ambitious in their NDCs but there are mechanisms to ensure that these are updated and reviewed globally. If you're getting value from this episode on nationally determined contributions, please click on the like button and, even better, subscribe at the same time. Why are nationally determined contributions important in COP26? Within the same Paris Agreement, there is a requirement for each country to update their NDCs every five years, which, allowing for the impact of the global COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, are to be updated for COP26 in 2021. Additionally, there is a requirement that each country must not only update their climate commitments, but that they cannot go back on past commitments. Here, Two examples of nationally determined contribution submissions can be highlighted, with the United Kingdom submitting a revision of its first NDC that was submitted on the 17th of November 2016 and an updated submission on the 11th of December 2020. And the United States, whose first NDC was submitted on the 2nd of September 2016, and their most recent submission made on the 21st of April 2021 as part of the United States rejoining the Paris Agreement. All NDCs submitted to the UNFCCC can be accessed at the NDC Registry website. A review of the currently submitted NDCs as at the 22nd of September 2020 at the Climate Action Tracker website shows that many countries' nationally determined contributions were considered to be insufficient, such as the United Kingdom submission. The UK's actions contained in its first NDC were considered to only lead to holding global temperatures at 3 degrees Celsius 
and not within the limit of below 2 degrees or preferably 1.5 degrees Celsius specified in the Paris Agreement. Indeed, according to the Climate Action Tracker website, very few countries' nationally determined contributions meet the Paris Agreement targets of less than 1.5 degrees or even the well below 2 degrees target. How will my country's nationally determined contributions affect me? There are many insights into the current and future actions that can be gained from the nationally determined contributions for your country and even an opportunity to compare NDCs between countries as the format is standardised for all nationally determined contributions. The structure of the NDC follows seven sections covering quantifiable information on the reference point, time frame, scope and coverage, planning processes, assumptions and methodological approaches including those for estimating and accounting for human-based greenhouse gas emissions and, as appropriate, removals. How the party considers that its NDC is fair and ambitious in the light of its national circumstances. And finally, how the nationally determined contribution contributes towards the achievement of the objective of the Convention as set out in its Article 2. As an illustration, the United Kingdom's nationally determined contribution provides insights into the information available with NDCs generally. The first section, entitled Quantifiable Information on the Reference Point, sets out the basic framework for the NDC covering the reference year, targets, data sources and updating on actions. The second section, is the time frame, which is a very short section but nonetheless very important, as it outlines the time frame for the implementation of the Paris Agreement, which for the UK is a single target between the 1st of January 2021 and the 31st of December 2030. The third section on scope and coverage outlines the country's target, which for the UK is an at least 68% economy-wide net reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2030 compared to the reference year levels. And the coverage is across the whole of the UK, including Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. The fourth section, planning processes, is by far the largest section, as you might imagine. It covers the domestic institutional arrangements for legislation such as the Climate Change Act 2008 and the current planning processes taking into account regulatory processes and the devolved administration activities for Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Additionally, it covers the national circumstances and context to the delivery of climate change such as sustainable development and poverty eradication, food security and policy, ocean and marine environment, and education and skills. Here, there is much that you can discover about the future direction of climate change actions by the government in your country. The next section has the long-winded title of Assumptions and methodological approaches, including those for estimating and accounting for anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions and, as appropriate, renewals. Well, that was a long title. It covers the approaches to accounting, taking into account the UK's 1990 to 2030 UK GHG inventory and compare 2030 net. GHG emissions to a reference year which is 1990 for CO2, methane and nitrous oxides and 1995 reference year for hydrofluorocarbons, perfluorocarbons, sulphur hexafluoride and nitrogen fluorides. The next section, how the party considers that its NDC is fair and ambitious in the light of its national circumstances is an opportunity for the country to describe 
how its NDC is fair and ambitious in accordance with the Paris Agreement. It mentions the reductions of emissions by at least 68% on the reference year levels 1990 or 1995 that we discussed in the previous section, which was the earlier UK target, partly overtaken by a new commitment to achieve 78% by 2035, with the earlier target resulting in UK emissions per person falling from around 14 tonnes of CO2 equivalent in 1990 to fewer than four tonnes of CO2 equivalent in 2030. Finally, the seventh section, how the nationally determined contribution contributes towards achievement of the objective of the Convention has set out in Article 2, is a short section reiterating the UK's commitment under Article 2 of the Paris Agreement. So, to summarise, I hope that this episode has given you a clear understanding of what is a nationally determined contribution, the importance of the national determined contributions to the Global Summit COP26 in November 2021, and to you as a citizen of your country, and how your government will meet its climate change commitments under the Paris Agreement. In the run-up to the COP26 summit, I will aim to provide other episodes to help in understanding climate change and the actions that you can take, both as your role as an environmental manager or consultant, or as a concerned citizen or individual. If you want to find out more about what is the COP26 and other events in and around the conference, you can click on the link here. If this episode has helped to advance your understanding of nationally determined contributions, please leave a comment in the box below if this video has helped you. Further information on all nationally determined contributions and references to documents mentioned in this episode are given in the description box below, including a link to the resources on the emsmastery.com website. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to ensure that you don't miss out on other episodes on environmental management and sustainability. Until then, thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this video, you can watch other episodes by clicking on the boxes in the top and bottom right, and to subscribe to this channel, click on the link to the left. Thank you.